Welcome back to the Sports Roundtable at the State News. My name is Brad LaPlante with Maddie Warden and Emily Martin of also the State News. Uh, Woohoo. Yep. Woo woo Ready? Cool. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. How green. are you guys doing? Go green. Go white. Fired up. Fired up. Uh, so you both are our resident hockey experts at the State News. Duh. Of course, right? Who would And have Michigan State has been on fire. Adam Nightingale with Coach of the Year. Yep. Uh, player so awards had uh, Artem Levshinov, Defensive Player, Freshman of the Year, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there were a bunch of honorable mentions uh, for players like uh, Carson. You know, Isaac Howard, Dorwart, and uh, Augustine, right? Augustine, no, got Augustine was on a second team. There you go. Uh, Nico Mueller was... Uh, sportsmanship. sportsmanship award. And sportsmanship then, award. That's a high one. He's such a good sportsman. <laughs> Carson, Isaac, and... <laughs> he's just so sportsman. He's just, Gosh, who was it? <laughs> so sportsman-y. He's so sportsman-like. You know. just Nico Mueller. Right. Oh, Joey Larson was the oh. third there you go. for honorable mentions. And then uh, I think Artie was first team all freshman. And then... Trey Augustine was second team all freshman. We love that. So uh, love so it. so we we do love that. Michigan State <laughs> is coming in to face off against a school down the road. Iconic school down the road. School down the road for a uh, just interesting matchup that I did not see coming. Oh, absolutely not. I don't know how many people actually did see that coming. I don't think anybody <laughs> did. I, as as we've just discussed, I literally had Minnesota written in the document up until I, I, I was gonna I was gonna change it if it changed, but I was like so confident that, that MSU would be facing Minnesota. Wrong. And was that, wrong. Was, that was obviously <laughs> wrong. I also thought that Wisconsin would have you know, I thought that Michigan State would have faced Michigan this previous weekend. Oh yeah, because I thought so too. We thought that Wisconsin would have taken care of business and beat right? Ohio State. I mean, that's the whole point of having a three-game series. Is Who so wants it more? right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And usually, the better team or the the team that played better in the regular season, I should say. Yeah. Uh, usually, they are the ones that come out on top. But in this case, that did not happen. And you saw Ohio State, who was, you know, on a really good run. So Yeah, I think all bets were off the table, honestly, for this Big Ten tournament. It was crazy. Yeah, I think so, too. But, I mean, for a little fun fact for you, this is the third year in a row that Michigan has gone to Mariucci Arena and beaten Minnesota. Because they're back-to-back -back Big Ten champs, and then they just beat them for the semifinals weekend. So, I mean, imagine how Minnesota feels. Like, they've had teams that are on top of the world in – they get beat by Michigan three years in a row with no chance to win a Big Ten championship. That's 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 crazy. That, I mean, that's yeah. that's the real rivalry right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's a battle of who can draft more first round picks and get them on your team. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the beauty of, Just of college hockey, though. Right? Yeah. Is that there's so many. You know, I mean, you had Michigan with Fantilli, and then he just went to the. You know, oh, yeah, the, he's gone. So he gone. Well, that, yeah. that's the thing, you know, with Michigan and Minnesota, they've had so many powerhouse pro, or, uh, players. you know, or players and yeah. teams that you know they just end up with NHL talent right off the, you know, the, and they they get uh, trekked off to the NHL. Then they got kind of got a, a new reset, you know, every almost every year, but they kind yeah. of keep having a huge run of NHL talent. But then you saw this season was particularly unique because you had Wisconsin and and uh, Michigan State, who... Michigan have, State has six guys drafted on the team, and one of them doesn't even play. One of them has been scratched yeah. a lot. Victor Hurdig. Victor Hurdig. And everybody's been talking about Trey Augustine going to the Runaways. Like, leaving after this year? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. With our I goaltending mean, that we have, pull up Kosa and... I mean, if he's if he's Get rid ready, of like it's like I don't know. I I mean, I guess I don't know what what in what would be in Augustine's best interest. Like, would you rather him develop with Nightingale or would you rather him go to the ECHL? A I mean, I don't people. think he'd go to the ECHL though. I, I think, think he'd, he'd go, go to Grand to, Rapids. You think he'd go straight to Grand Rapids? I think he'd go yes. to Grand Rapids, one hundred percent. If he stays another year to develop with, I mean, with Luca and with John Moore and with mm -hmm. Coach DeMichael, 
he's set for Grand Rapids after that for sure. Everybody thinks is predicting at least one more year with I can with see Trey it. staying. Okay. And then he yeah. out. Then he's gone. Which good for him. Which would you know, and would make sense, and that would um, with DePasquo, uh, that would be you know, oh, yeah. um, that would be good for him because then he would get, uh, and he's a still still a solid goalie. Oh absolutely. yeah, he's great. You know, absolutely. So especially if the... we build our like our young defensive core that we have right now, wild. I mean, I feel like even if we didn't have Trey and we had Luca, we'd be really good either way. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I think uh, and 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 Luca has the the huge uh, you know um, he was on what that that BCHL team that lost three games the whole year, which is crazy. Um, I didn't know that. To think about that, yeah, like he was, I was following him the entire uh, like college commit year that he was in his last season with uh, with BCH with the Pentaton V's, and he and his team lost three games and they played fifty three games or something like that. Wow! Like it's it was yeah. wild. They and, went thirty six three and one, and he played forty games. Right. So he played every game. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was it is crazy. And it, it's not and to be fair, the BCHL is not the USHL, but you know, it was it's still, you know, But he's, still, I mean, he's playing in a league that has a lot of tough players that are either going to get drafted as or, a goalie too. Oh yeah, for sure. To have that kind of record? Yeah. It's crazy. So, um for you guys, can we uh just I guess give me a brief recap of uh the Ohio State series and um, how like that looked? Were you guys nervous that Michigan State wasn't going to pull through, or you know how they go? I know that Michigan State they scored, then Ohio State came back, then uh, Michigan State scored again. So how'd that look? I'll I'm gonna just put this out there. I've never seen a game with that many reviews in in a two yeah, period there's three. Yeah, and they had two goals that were revoked. were revoked, and then they tried to challenge Nash's goal, I believe, and it stayed on the board. Yep. Um, but even Nightingale said post game like that's the most reviews he's ever seen in a game before, um, loudest I've ever heard. Mun, yeah, I absolutely. honestly going into it, I was worried. I really was just because Ohio State has been so hot and they beat Wisconsin, who was at the top of the Big Ten ahead of us for a second too. Um, and then just seeing the way that Ohio State has played defensively, it goes to show like even our team last year, like uh, we've. I know that I've talked with people about it. Like, we arguably to people, we could have had the worst roster last year, and we made it as far as we did because of the conditioning that our coaches put us through. And I honestly can vouch and say that that's probably the same way that Ohio State has been. Yeah, there's been more losses, but they were they played important games how they should play important games. They pull when they need to. Yeah, 100%. Um, I was confident yeah. up until, like, the last little bit – because we were only up by one, and um, Ohio State pulled their goalie in the final minute, and they rushed us right when when they, when they did that. Mm-hmm. And so at that point in the in the final minute, could have been anybody's game if they scored on us. Yeah, and I was scared that we were going to go in overtime. I thought so too. I was terrified. But I think and overtimes, just... overtime. I mean, it's it is a playoff game, so it is five v five. Right. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's a little bit more fair. Yes. You know, it's not like it's three v three where no. it literally could go anyway. Right. The first team that wins possession is just going to be the winner. Yeah. I think it just goes to show our our defense was very very strong even till the end. Like no, we don't get tired. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths, especially with our conditioning. Is it seems like a lot of uh, Big Ten teams get tired quickly. And they show it. That's how Michigan State was under Dayton Cole. Correct. Yeah. Like they, I mean, they would play like two periods, and then all of a sudden it'd be like they give up seven goals. Correct. In the third. And I know a little bit has to do with uh, what Adam Nightingale has been teaching them. I've noticed in a lot of the press conferences, he's like frustrations uh, a waste, a waste of, emotion. of emotion. And I, I was literally talking about that with my therapist. I was like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> I was like, he's no onto way. something. Like this is smart. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's good. good. That is that is good. It's funny. So I it's, love that. Yeah, it's really interesting to think about the way that his his words just kind of play out in the game, and nobody even realizes it. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to a lot of fans, and they're like, "This team has had an insane amount of chemistry this season compared to any other season." Yeah, and I mean, imagine what they can do next year. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I I do think uh, you know it it is a bummer that MSU isn't gonna get a one seed at uh, the NCAA tournament. Um, at least it's not looking likely. You know, 
Um, I think even if they win, it's still kind of a you're you're gonna kind of have to hope for a lot of things to happen, right? Um, because like it's all based on you know computer projections and whether or not MSU's win versus Michigan is you know good enough to to overcome. I think Denver might be in that last spot. I yeah, haven't, I haven't checked. BC, BU, NODAC, and Denver. Right. So like you know you're gonna hope you're gonna have to hope that you know. Well, I, I haven't checked it, so to be fair, you know, they're, they're the status of those conference championships. But Michigan State, at least, like, I even if they lose, anything. won't lose a two-seed. So, um, which, you know, is uh, is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be fun. But I think this upcoming game against Michigan, first of all, is going to be crazy. Like, ticket, I, I can't imagine what the prices are. I just uh, like looked, upwards of $1,000. Yep, I looked yesterday, and it was, like, 1500 mm-hmm. That is insane. <laughs> Who is paying for that? <laughs> Who is paying for this? I mean, but like, what is it? What is it for students, though? Uh, I mean, you had to. It was first come, first yeah. serve. Like, Monsters got dibs on tickets first. Okay. And then, well, but, uh, so, what are they paying? Like ten bucks. What? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So then, after that, it's across the board. It's anybody's game. That's crazy. But also, yeah, in season ticket holders, also theirs is uh, valid throughout the tournament too. I thought was pretty neat that they don't have to fight for that no that's that's I mean at least at least there's that I think that um like uh uh, I don't know I I feel like like if you guys could predict that this game goes goes in because in my uh, the way I see it I think it could go either way like I mean I've seen MSU lose like seven to one wasn't it yeah and then and then they 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 had a, a a um Michigan had a lead at, in the game at Yost, yeah, right they were after up four to one, and we scored four unanswered goals halfway through the second period, and then won seven to five. And that's and to me, that's a miracle. Yeah, you know, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like you, you, like Michigan State easily could have gotten, arguably should have gotten swept in that game. Yeah, yes. and so right, to you know, you're play. up, you're up yeah. that much, like I you shouldn't disagree, lose. But. Um, but. So I guess what do you guys what do you guys think is going to happen? Is 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 your expert opinion? What do you think? Uh, what do you think? Comes? I think they can do it. I think they can do it. I think that they can or they will. I think they, they will. will. It's all about perspective, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I I fully with my entire chest can say that especially not not seeing money is everything, but with the prices that these tickets are going for, it's there's gonna not going to be, be a Michigan fan in the house. No. Mm. And I know that they really feed off of Michigan State fans. And mm-hmm. I think with the whole entirety of East Lansing being all eyes on Michigan State hockey, I think it's going to be fine. I think that after the first game against Michigan, too, they definitely learned how to control their emotions a little bit better because obviously you see them go on the road to Yost twice and then also take that to uh, Little Caesars Arena. Which was wild. Yeah, I mean, and you see – like, just the way that they played was a whole different team to, compared to what they brought against Michigan on night one. I think it's going to be tight up until the end. Like, I, think I so was too. surprised with how low scoring it was against Ohio State, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I thought that was, like, it was an intense game, absolutely. But I didn't expect it to be so, so low scoring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think it's definitely, I think it's going to be it's higher playoff scoring. hockey. Yeah, it is playoff hockey. I think it's going to be higher scoring, but I think it's going to be very tight. I think so too. Interesting, and uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. I can't wait. Um, yeah, wow. And and I can't. And it's a game. It's crazy because it's a game that I am jealous for. Like I'll be watching it on BTN, but I am jealous of people who are going to go to that game and get to see it. I'm very like that excited. is something that I I wish that I like had some sort of reason to go to. Yeah, you absolutely. You know. Um, so anyway, with that said, um, we're gonna move on uh, real quick to uh, our that has been our hockey hockey portion. We're gonna move on to our trivia portion of the episode. Oh no! Boy. Um, you guys won't get to see the end, but you guys do get to guess. So here's so here's the deal. Okay, so the trivia question is about me- how good are you guys get? How do you guys feel about basketball? Eh. Oh boy. Yeah, okay. It's a great <laughs> basketball question. In the spirit of March Madness, okay, so in 2021, UCLA was the second school to make it to the Final Four after initially starting the tournament in the first four. 
UCLA defeated Michigan State in its first game, as we know, and then went on to lose as an 11 seed to Gonzaga in the semifinal in the Frozen Four. Who was the first team to? Who was the first team to to go from the from the first four to the final four? The f- like the first four so, out yeah. to the final four. Yeah, the, the first four to the final four. Because UCLA was the second. The set. Yeah, UCLA was the oh second school. Can I get a hint? Can I call somebody? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? What would your hint be? I don't know that the hint I can think of would what be good enough. What color? Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, You're so funny. <laughs> they are in the... This isn't going to help you. God. They are in the Atlantic 10 conference. Oregon. Definitely not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Boston College. I almost guessed that. No, the Boston College. Oh, no, no, never mind. I'm stupid. Never mind. I'm thinking of hockey conferences. Oh, okay. Was it UVM? Vermont? <laughs> Was it You're UMass? Just listening to mom. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say okay. UMass. UMass. No, no. That is final answer. No. Is it Albany? Mm-mm. Was it Maine? Mm-mm. Was How about it New, New Hampshire? Hampshire? Oh my gosh! Okay, we're we're cutting to commercial. We're cutting to commercial. We will be right back with men's basketball coverage. Welcome back to the Sports Roundtable podcast with uh, from the State News. From the State News. Uh, now we got on Luke Joseph and PJ Pfeiffer from the Sports Desk. Uh, PJ, obviously the sports editor. For the semester, and Luke, um, the resident uh, basketball expert, um, love to have him on, of course. Uh, welcome back to the show, guys. How you guys feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good? Feeling good. Fe- feeling nervous for tomorrow, but sure. Feeling, feeling nervous good. for tomorrow. I got you, I got you. Um, so, uh, first things first, uh, we got... Um, uh, just a reminder that the trivia question will be at the end. Um, no cheating. Do not look at the trivia question before or the answer to it uh, before um, you know we reveal, and then you guys uh, you know might just earn a point or two or something. Or I'll keep track of these, and then at the end of the year you'll just be the winner or something. Okay. All right. I don't know. Whoever gets the most trivia points wins. A new car, maybe. Oh, you know, I, yeah. I need a car. Please. I need a car. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. Um, so, uh, so the men, um, how, how, by the way, I just want to um, preface this because, so we know the bracket now, right? Michigan State and Michigan, both nine seeds, yeah. you know, somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the women would actually be higher. I don't know much, though, about the women's field. I just thought that they were doing pretty good. And their bar was so low that I just kind of, like, yeah. just thought they'd be higher. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's just great the fact that, you know, because their the bar was super low, mm-hmm. the fact that they made it to a 9 seed is just an achievement all in itself. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, I mean, I love the, I like the matchup against UNC. I don't know if I would pick them because I think UNC uh, is – just a little bit better um but i do think it's gonna be i do think it would be a back and forth matchup uh, gotcha yeah definitely yeah and definitely. so how are you guys feeling regarding the men's tournament because i wanted to start here how were you guys feeling when they went into that final commercial break and michigan state was still not selected on the board like because yeah. I, I went here's the thing i went into this tournament with no sweat like at all, you know, because so here's my argument. Okay, mm-hmm. Michigan State was at the t- at the time that the net, or I'm sorry, at the time that the tournament was being selected, they were at like 24 or something in the net rankings, right? right? And the lowest team to get left out of the net rankings was at like 33. I now it's it now it's now it's different. Yeah, and and we'll get to that in a moment. How Indiana State absolutely should be in the tournament right now, mm-hmm. but they're not. Uh, but Michigan State was 24, and I'm like, there's no way because if they don't leave, if they leave Michigan State out at a 24 on the net, like there's no reason to use the net 
mm-hmm. at all. Like, it just makes it irrelevant. So there's no way. I thought that maybe they'd be, like, a 10 seed, like, kind of, like, kind of, like, hanging on almost. But they mm-hmm. ended up being a 9 seed, which, you know, uh, is is interesting. But I guess if some people would argue that it's what this team deserves to have to face a 1 seed if they if yeah. they actually end up, uh, you know, beating Mississippi State, MSU versus MSU. Uh, but how were you guys feeling? Were you guys nervous at all about Michigan State not making it so in the tournament? My, I thought they got a higher seed than I thought they would. I thought they were going to be one of those uh, playing teams, yeah. like we would be playing tonight or uh, yesterday, and we got to talk sooner or later about that Virginia game. Um, but the, uh, I believe it was around uh, the day. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Saturday, the odds changed from us being a guaranteed uh, team in the tournament to being one of the playing teams. And I believe uh, Izzo in his uh, press conference right after Selection Sunday, he kind of talked about talked about that. And um, as Selection Sunday was going on, uh, when I saw one of those, like all the rest of the playing games... I thought we were gonna miss it. I didn't think we were gonna make it at all. Because um, mm-hmm. I think we have definitely had a very disappointing season. Um, I mean, we have 19 wins, and I think there's only one other team that has 19 wins that's in the tournament right now, and I believe that's St. Peter's, who's a 15 seed. Yeah. Wow. I mean, but at the same time, wouldn't you say that like Michigan State has like even if they don't have the win total. They mm-hmm. still have other things on their resume. Didn't they beat Baylor? We beat Baylor. Yeah. Right. So that's. I mean, that's got to count for something. It's got to count for something, but at the same time, we have pretty bad losses. Uh, obviously, we lost the Wisconsin seasonal. loss. I think was the big one. Wisconsin wa- loss was definitely a big one. I mean, our first game we lost against James Madison. Yeah. Um, I mean, James, but James Madison, Madison, James Madison is, is a good team. They're a good team. But, it's, you know, the home opener, we had such good expectations in the beginning, you know, it, at it, home. It, it's been the, It being at home has yeah, been. It's so, definitely been disappointing. Um, I'm trying to find their their quad one record, but... Um, well, I, I was just going to mention real quick that I actually think that because... So I, I was thinking about it and how much I kind of hate bracketology. Like, I've grown to hate it. And I don't mean for this to be, like, a hot take or something. <laughs> okay. But, like... With bracketology, I mean, you saw like two months ago, people were painting Michigan State because their season was kind of not going so well. Mm -hmm. Um, People were painting Michigan State as like a bubble team. Yeah. And, but their net ranking was still pretty relatively high. Mm -hmm. And so my problem with that is that like MSU, I don't, I don't think was ever a bubble team until that Wisconsin loss. I don't think that their their postseason was ever in jeopardy until they lost to Wisconsin, because that was like I mean in my opinion that was like the loss. That, that was like the switch. That was right. That was when their season was like oh shit this team is actually kind of I mean, bad. Looking at the the quad one record, they're three and nine, and then in quad two they're six and five. You know I think, and then they have that home loss against Iowa and the home loss against Ohio State, I think that... Oh, maybe it was the Ohio State one that I'm it, talking about. I mean... Because isn't Wisconsin kind of a good team? Wisconsin is, I believe, a five seed. Yeah, but is, didn't Ohio State not make the tournament? They did not they're make both, the tournament. They're no. both red. They lo- that loss mm-hmm. to Ohio State, mm-hmm. correction, mm-hmm. that's the one that I think really on was the, like... On the buzzer beater. Oh, was, the buzzer beater. Yeah, when, when buzzer they beater. lost to Ohio State like at the final second, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that was, was the game where I was like, that oh, was, they, they might not. That they was, might not make That was it. the game where you kind of needed to win. Like, I mean, they just fired their head coach. You're at home. Uh, you know, I think they had... They were on a little bit of a streak before that game. Uh, that was also the Xavier Booker uh, that was, um, I think controversy, his, right? I think that was his first start that was like his first start and 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 he started him and played him 17 minutes and, and didn't then play he him didn't again. play at all in the second half um yeah I even think, though they're they were going through some offensive struggle and you were like why don't you just put why him don't in? you just put him in like it was an objectively odd yeah, call yeah. i think um 
Yeah, I, and we discussed that at length. <laughs> that that's that's what I, I think. It's just the fact that they're three and nine in quad one wins. I mean, they lost to Duke, Arizona, Nebraska, Northwestern, uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, uh, and then both times Purdue. And then their only wins in the quad one are Baylor, Indiana State, and Illinois. So I just think that all that it just it adds up and the selection committee regardless of net they do take that i think they do take that into consideration the indiana state thing is crazy like the fact that yeah. indiana state yeah. wins their regular season mm-hmm. and then and they i think they've only lost 3 games but then they didn't win the tournament mm-hmm. the conference tournament and they lose yeah. they're just out goodbye yeah it's crazy like that's a yeah. pretty good season right to so lose yeah, I mean, 3 games I don't think anybody expected Indiana State to be as good as they were this year. Not, and, not to my knowledge. And, and and like we were saying, so before, the, I think it was in 2019, a team ranked 33 in the net got left out of the tournament. Mm-hmm. And this season, that number is now increased, or, well, technically decreased, the it's threshold. Decreased. Um, because uh, now it's 29. Indiana it State is, yeah. was 29 in the net. And they they get left out of the tournament, which does suck because it's kind of like it's kind of like when a team transitions to Division One and then mm-hmm. they can't just play in the postseason for like four seasons. Yeah, you know, it's like even though you had a good season, it's still like we don't care. Obviously, this is much different form of robbery, mm-hmm. you know, because you still feel like you know Indiana State can, uh, you know, should is de- more deserving over a lot of high majors who like you know I mean. I don't know. I'm just thinking, like, Virginia, for example, right? Yeah. Like, we're just talking that, about this, yeah. right? I, I mean, I would have had in, I would have had Indiana State over Virginia. I would have had St. John's over Virginia, mm-hmm. you know, with yeah, Rick Pitino. Um, I would have had uh, Providence over Virginia. I mean, Virginia was ranked almost 200th in the country in offensive ranking. Mm. They are awful. Like... They're bad at on <laughs> offense. I mean, they have they have a guy in Ryan Dunn who is going to be a first round pick in the NBA. And, you know, that's awesome for him, but it's not definitely not because of his offense. It's mm-hmm. because of his his defense and his you know his defensive versatility. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they went almost 15 minutes from the 10 minute mark all the way to the 16 minute mark. Uh without a single point from 10 minutes left in the first half they had 14 points going into halftime they didn't score again until 16 minutes in that's the second, horrible that second sounds half. horrible it's awful yeah. it was it was awful it i wish i could get my time back from watching that. <laughs> like it was that bad <laughs> I mean, uh, I have a God. I have a funny story from Selection Sunday, mm-hmm. real quick. Mm-hmm. So I um, it was like what I f- fell asleep on my couch accidentally at like four p.m. or something. Maybe like four thirty. We'll give me yeah. We'll, we'll say four thirty. Um, accidentally fell asleep and then uh woke up at like six thirty, six forty five or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I woke up and for some reason, whenever I wake up from a nap, like my heart is just racing so I'm uh, my heart's already racing and then I'm like oh my god I forgot like selection Sunday like I've slept through it or whatever <laughs> so then I'm like trying to check Twitter and everything while I'm yeah. turning on the TV and I'm not seeing anything about Michigan State and I'm like I'm like I texted um Thomas and Bella and I'm like if MSU like did MSU make it if not I send them a whole par- paragraph like if they didn't make it you have to interview students you have to try to go to the press or everything like this like this will be a huge story everything like that right <laughs> Still, finding nothing on Twitter or anything in Google, everything like that. And then I, like, turn on CBS or whatever, and it just, like, wasn't our region yet. And I was like, thank God. And then I saw we're ninth seed, and I was yeah. like, I mean, it's, like, deserving. Like, I don't yeah. know. We, it was just a, yeah, it was just a not great season for us. And it makes sense while we're playing, the, why we're ninth seed. And then I was just thinking, I was like, well, if we just say we win, you know, just say we beat Mississippi State, then we're playing UNC. 
So that's our, so that's our the chances thing. Are low. I, I filled out my bracket this year, and I, I I based a lot of my decisions on statistics. Mm-hmm. Um, so just to give you a couple examples, um, for example, I think like ten seeds are really 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 smart to bet on a lot of the time. Yeah. Like if you f- kind of feel it, I think like ten the, seeds. I think they're the betting favorite. They've been the betting favorite the past couple years. Uh, right. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, like so there's so there's a couple ten seeds that. Um, and I'm not gonna like ob- I'm obviously not gonna like break down my entire bracket right, <laughs> right. now, um, but uh, I think I have no I don't have any ten seeds winning actually. Um, oh, this we no the only one I have is Colorado State, which is ironic because they just played Virginia, and like I was wondering one of those teams would beat Texas. You know, mm. but here's the thing. So with that said, I'm pretty sure that at least one 10 seed or not, not 10 seed, sorry, first four team, one first four team has gone on to the second weekend, like the last three seasons in a row or something like that. Mm. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, so I based my bracket on that, like mm. those statistics and, and those continuing trends. Um, same thing with like eight or nine seeds. They're not very, don't bet on them. Right. Like if yeah. they, if if a nine seed wins, they're um, even if a nine seed wins their first game, nine percent of the time they win their second game. You know, like yeah. because they got to play number one. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so why would you? Yeah. Why would you bother with that? And then also, fifteen seeds are crazy um, because I I can't remember the exact statistic, but fifteen seeds have like if for so, like one fifteen seed has won for the last like three or four years or something stupid. Mm. Like, so I have St. Peter's beating Tennessee. So, <laughs> wow. you know what I mean? Just like I've, I only, but, but I use these statistics, mm-hmm. these stats and these trends to yeah. do my bracket. Yeah. And so that's what I have here is I have Michigan state beating Mississippi state. Then I have them losing to North Carolina in the second mm-hmm. round. Mm-hmm. Who, who that's like a lot of people. I feel like a lot of Michigan state fans. I feel like have that. Who, yeah. yeah. Who's in your final four? So yeah, you guys oh, if yeah. we want, we can go down the, yeah. the go down the Pe- line. Yeah. And I also want to know while you're before you say your final four, I want to know what you have also or if you agree if Michigan State even has a chance against North Carolina. Because that's something I want to talk about too. Um but uh, or even like for Mississippi State, like what's the odds? I mean, we don't have to get into that too much. Because that will be like this. This goes up on a Friday, mm-hmm. you know, and they'll have already played. Yeah. Uh, but my final four is number one UConn, okay? classic. Number two Marquette, okay. okay. Uh, number three Creighton, and number four Alabama. I didn't mean <laughs> to do that. You I did just, a one, that's two, how, three, four. That's how it worked out. Okay. Wow. That's how it worked out. Wow. Yeah, I got Creighton beating Kansas. I wait. I, I almost want to see it. I to go I into lead eight, three okay. versus four. I want to see that happen. And then Alabama, I have against Arizona, doing that. Okay. And, and Alabama beating Arizona. Did you Alabama say? beating Arizona. Okay. Um, and then UConn obviously will. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. But you know what's funny is I have James Madison in the elite eight. I have James wow. Madison in my final four. Do you, wow. No way. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No way. Okay, yeah. I have James Madison losing to Marquette in the uh in the Elite Eight. Okay. Um and then I have Yukon beating Creighton in the final. So Okay. I mean for for mine, I have Yukon uh mm-hmm. beating Illinois uh out of the East. Okay. I have North Carolina beating Arizona out of the West to go to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have Houston uh, beating uh, Colorado okay. in the South. I think Colorado is really good. Um, you know, I think they're going to be that ten that playing team to make it to the second round. That's actually yeah, that's interesting because I, I I was like it was between them for me. It was between them. It was between Florida and Texas. I wasn't okay. looking mm-hmm. at this as like which team I think will win. Mm-hmm. I think it's a which team will lose. Like that's how I was trying to go on. Interesting. You know. Okay. So I was like, which which team is more likely to lose to the play-in team? Yeah. Okay. You know. And then anyway. for the Midwest, I have. Um, where is it? Sorry, it's I have Purdue 
mm-hmm. losing to Tennessee. There you go. So okay. it's UConn, uh, North Carolina, Houston, and Tennessee. It's pretty it, – I mean, it's three number ones and a two, but I don't – I see a lot of – if there were to be upsets, they'd mm-hmm. probably be in the first weekend. I don't see any kind of in the second weekend or any Cinderella-type right. things other mm-hmm. than Colorado. Yeah. I, I St. Peter's obviously always a, always a good good look on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Did you fill, have you filled out your bracket yet, PJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so who you who you have in your? So in my East section, I have UConn. Sorry, in my East section, I have UConn beating Illinois. Okay, and then um, okay. So I okay, just stick with me here. Okay, I, yeah, have, I feel like I'm about to judge you. <laughs> yeah, you are, you oh, are, you I are. See it. Yeah. Oh no. I have Baylor beating Michigan State in the no. West region. Okay. 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 So you're Keep, saying Michigan State's gonna beat North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Then who do they beat in this in the Sweet 16? St. Mary's, which is easy. St. Mary's, you have beating Grand Canyon, and then having them beat who Alabama? Yeah. Okay, and then they beat, and then okay, so so Michigan State beats Alabama. Yeah, I mean not Alabama, sorry, beats, Saint Mary's. Beats Saint Mary's. Okay, and then and then in the lead eight, who do they beat? Well, Baylor they beat, beats. They beat. Oh, Baylor oh, beats, Baylor Michigan, beats State. Michigan State. Okay, okay yeah. that makes sense. Got it. So then in my um north, what what south, south region? Here south. we go, south region. I have uh James Madison beating Marquette. All okay. Right. okay. Man, this is like my my B bracket that you're like listing <laughs> off. Like that's what I. If you had. wanted upsets, just look at PJ's draft. Mm-hmm. Right. Know. And then and then in my um, uh, Midwest region, I have Tennessee beating Kansas. Got so, it. Okay. okay. So, so then my final four: it's UConn playing Baylor. Got it. And James Madison playing Tennessee. And I was gonna pick Baylor in the finals, but. Instead, I picked UConn beating Baylor in the semifinals, whatever. So uh, I have Baylor beating Tennessee in the finals. Wow. Okay. The bold. Yeah, bold. bold. But yeah. I, I love okay. Baylor so basketball. I, I want to know, know also, like, where your one seeds fall off. Like, so, like, because yeah. I obviously went with only one seed making the final. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of the teams that generally make the final four are one seeds. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um but so I have UConn making it into the final four, uh, but Houston loses to James Madison in the Elite Eight on mine, or not the Elite Eight, the Sweet um, Sixteen, the Sweet Sixteen on mine. Same. And then uh, I have North Carolina losing to Alabama, the in the um, Sweet Sixteen as well. And then I have Purdue also losing in the Sweet 16. I feel like that's a like that's too perfect. You know, all yeah. my number one mm-hmm. seeds that don't make it lose in the Sweet 16. Purdue would lose to Kansas. I I have Purdue losing to Kansas also in the Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. And then I have um I'm the, I was the same as you. And then I have North Carolina losing to MSU. Got it. I mean, all I'm gonna say is you guys might have to change your brackets really quick because Kansas is without. Arguably their best player for the rest. Well, that of, sucks. And Hunter I'm not Dick, changing and then, it. And then Hunter Dickinson hurt his, uh, I believe his okay, shoulder. I'll, real quick, I'll change it because I have McNeese and <laughs> against Gen- against I have them Gonzaga. winning against Gonzaga. <laughs> I think there could be a possibility where it's Samford versus McNeese in the oh, second okay. round. To you go think to you s- think Samford wow. is gonna beat Kansas? There's I think no that's a real way. possibility. Okay, I do think that's, that's a real possibility. Fair. Yeah, because um, think, because the Kansas is injured is injured to hell. So they, how who who do they have McCuller, McCuller, whatever McCuller. he's McCuller. out for the year. McCuller and Dickinson are their top players, and they're mm-hmm. out. They're out. Dickinson, there's you can't po- tell me there's that. possibility he could come back, but I mean, coming back with All an right. injury, you know, and plus it's his. Uh, I believe it's his. Uh, left shoulder that he hurt, and I believe he is uh, left-handed. Damn. Or left. If I if player. I lose this, I'm gonna sue you. Just so oh, you know. You know what? I'm gonna okay. change mine actually right now. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm not doing. saying to change it. I'm just saying. I'm picking you know. Samford now. Who should beat? Now this like screws up my whole bracket. Now who who wins against McNeese and Samford? 
I don't know. I don't know. McNeese. I'm, McNeese, 100%. I think McNeese. McNeese probably has a funnier oh, name, yeah. so I'll pick McNeese. And then I that changes actually my entire thing because now I have Purdue going to the Final Four. Oh, no. I still I, I put McNeese lose, uh, beating Purdue in the... You think so? Yeah. You think you wow. think McNeese will beat Purdue? Yeah, I don't know if I would go that far. I don't know that I would go that far either. Well, that that's pretty bold. I I, I kind of respect it's it. It's madness, and I like it, but <laughs> yes. I can't. Okay, well now I have Purdue in the Final Four and losing to UConn in the championship game. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've just adjusted my whole bracket <laughs> for me. I mean, I'm not gonna. I, maybe I should redo this because one team. One you, selection can I mean, change you could so just much. Make, you could just make another one. I could. That's true. That's the beauty of the internet. Yeah. Um. So, uh. So Mississippi State, Michigan State plays Mich- Mississippi mm-hmm. State, right? So, do we think that Michigan State has a chance? Like, run yeah. down like Mississippi State. Uh. Yeah. The they're you know, so, everything. The viewers aren't gonna care because the game's already over. Yeah. Exactly. I think. So Mississippi State's leading scorer is a freshman, Josh Hubbard. He's scoring 17 points per game. And then uh, Tolu Smith, who's a senior uh, senior forward, um, is averaging 15 points a game. But he's missed, he's missed time. Uh, he's only played 22 games this year. Um, you know, I think those two are obviously the key, uh, key players for Mississippi State. Uh, and then also you can't overlook uh, Karen Matthews. Um, he's averaging almost 10 points, uh, seven rebounds, and he's uh, leading uh, Mississippi State in assists with uh, three. I know that's not very much, but still leading in assists. And he's shooting 62% from the field. So, um, But the the one thing, if you're Michigan State, Mississippi State is horrendous at shooting the three. They're shooting 32.5% from three. And they're not a very good free throw shooting team, only shooting 67% uh, from the free throw line. So if if you're Michigan State defensively, just I just let them shoot all day, make them prove to you that you have to step out and defend the three, um, and you just got to be able to protect the paint. And even if you know you get calls fouled, it's not the end of the world because only shooting 67% from the free throw line. So you know, I think if you're Izzo, you can you can take advantage of that. You can find a way to take advantage of that. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, so just keep in mind, though, too, and and I guess this would bode well for Michigan State uh, that only 65 percent of the time in the last five tournaments, number nine seeds have. Or I'm sorry, not only. Sorry. Uh, just put it this way: 13 out of the last 20 games between. Uh, um, number nine seeds and eight seeds have been won by nine seeds in the last five years. So okay. in the last five tournaments. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess Michigan State has the upper hand. That's sixty five percent. Um, you know, three more than half. I guess. Yeah. yeah. So statistically speaking, they do have a a, a solid um mm-hmm. advantage. Um, and then uh, then North Carolina. Do you think? I mean, it's in North Carolina. What are we thinking? Yeah, so I mean, according to my bracket, your br- yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's one. Hard to, our brackets. But no, it, it'll thinking. it'll be really hard. Um, it'll be really hard for MSU to beat North Carolina, um, especially when UNC has home court advantage. I just think they're better offensively. I, I mean, what what can we say that probably already hasn't been said, yeah. like around campus? I mean. Yeah. North Carolina has the best player in the ACC in R.J. Davis, who I believe scored, I think, over 20 points per game this year. Um, and then they also have the best big man in the ACC with Armando Baycott, who's been there. I believe this is his fifth year. And I think UNC is out for some type of vengeance or revenge for how last year went. You know, they were really disappointing. You know, they didn't even make the tournament last year. And I think they're going to be coming with a purpose. I think they're going to be the most driven team, I think, more than Purdue. Mm -hmm. Because I know Purdue, Mm -hmm. they lost to the 16th seed last year. Um, But North Carolina, they were the the number one seed going into last year. Mm. You know, they had that returning team of 
RJ Davis, Baycott, and then they had Caleb Love, uh, who's over at Arizona right now. But, you know, they didn't even make the tournament, and now they're one seed mm. this year. So I think they're going to be driven. I think Hubert Davis, their head coach, has got something to prove. Um, I think I think UNC – I have UNC winning the entire thing. Got it. Wow. So um, so now we're going to switch gears a little bit to women's basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh so not too far away, uh, you know they're playing. They're not. They're not playing too far away. Uh, is Michigan State? Uh, they're playing North Carolina though. Uh, number eight, number nine also versus yeah. number eight, North Carolina. Um, I don't know too much about uh, women's basketball, um, but if I do know this, if Michigan State does win against North Carolina, it doesn't look too good because then likely they have to play South Carolina Mm -hmm. pending a total collapse. Right. So uh, that doesn't look too good. Um, So uh, we're looking at probably what, like an early exit? Mm -hmm. Um, Not to say that the MSU is bad, but just because they have a brutal – they have a brutal – matchup coming up because if they win yeah because it's in south carolina mm-hmm. yeah against so, an undefeated team right so here's the thing um so north carolina do we what are we vibing like what are we thinking that msu stands a chance what, think, what's the deal i think we yeah. can i think we can uh i think we can come away with the win on that um mm-hmm. you know i think uh obviously uh julia and uh DD, I think they're probably going to be the uh, the players to watch for MSU. Um, DD shooting great from the three. Uh, she's going to have to keep doing that um, to beat North Carolina, obviously. I mean, she's shooting 41% uh, from the three-point line. And then Julia is our leading scorer with 15. Um, I'm trying to pull up North Carolina's uh, stats. They only have three players in double figures uh, in terms of points, um, whereas MSU... Uh, has four, and then also uh, Tori is averaging almost ten points per game. So mm. I'm going to count that as five because uh, it's it's nine point eight, but I'm counting it as ten. Um, so obviously, like we have more, uh, we have more who can go out and get a bucket. Mm. Um, you know, whereas North Carolina, they don't have as much. Got it. So I think I think we can win that. I think we can win that game. Mm-hmm. And. Um, yeah, wow. That's uh I mean that's that seems like good news. Do you think but do you think it'll be a problem for MSU uh to like I mean it, it both first of all, we know that that home court advantage is going to, you know, go towards North Carolina in the mm-hmm. men's the men's side. But even though Michigan State, I mean, wouldn't you think that if you're a North Carolina fan and you think that MS uh, your team has a chance against MSU, Right, and then if they win, they're likely playing South Carolina. You would think that the fan base would want to show up, right? So, do you think that that maybe the North Carolina uh, fan base is going to travel and that have an impact on this game? Probably. I mean, I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, Michigan State fans, we we obviously know. I think they travel pretty well. Um, You know, I think Michigan State fans are probably going to show up um, in a large amount uh, to support uh the women's basketball team and well, the especially basketball. i guess if you well because it's in the same vicinity too so that might help yeah. msu mm-hmm. fans mm-hmm. because they can kind of catch both i mean especially i know if you're a reporter these games are only an hour and a half away from each other yeah, yeah. ssr is uh yeah they're going to both so that's the thing like you can you're obviously able to cover both mm-hmm. right you know yeah i mean it it's definitely going to be a challenge obviously we're playing in it, where is it? South Carolina. For yeah. Women's? So the so the second yeah the uh the women's team is playing in South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I mean it's obviously North Carolina, and then we would play against South Carolina. I think that's it's definitely going to be a challenge, but you know I think, um, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a hard fought match. I'll just mm-hmm. put it at that mm-hmm. regarding. I think uh, it's going to be back and forth for, for, for sure most yeah. of the game, if mm-hmm. not the entire game. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, uh, so that's the end of this episode. But first, we're gonna leave off with trivia. 
Trivia time. Um, so uh, I asked this to Maddie and Emily at the beginning, in the middle, uh, and they had no idea. Um, but they are hockey hockey gals, so you know you guys might have a little bit better of a time okay. with this. Okay. So um, I don't know how I'm gonna po award points to this if you get it right, but if you get it right, maybe that might be cool. Um, so I might keep track. Hoping for a new car. <laughs> right. Uh, so here's the question, uh, as we're going to remind viewers. Uh, in 2021, UCLA was the second school to make it into the final four after starting the NCAA tournament in the first four. UCLA, as you might remember, defeated Michigan State in its first game in the first four and went on to lose to Gonzaga in the semifinal. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the first team to go from first four to final four. Can I get a... I should play the Jeopardy scene. Can, can, can I get a year, like... like What year? Like, happened? not not, year? A, not even year, just like... Ten year, decade, maybe. Decade. So that's hard. Because, oh! Because the first four only began uh, in 2011. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm I can tell you that it was in 2011. Is it VCU? <laughs> um, I'm going to say... I, I'm on the Baylor train today, so I'm going to say Baylor. Okay, got it. Those are your final answers? Uh -huh. Yeah. It was VCU. It was? <laughs> it was VCU. I knew it. <laughs> I knew wow. there was, you, like, I some type of... I knew VCU had a Cinderella story, like, in the early... Uh, 2000, 2010s. Um, yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah. That's it, it was what? yes. The answer was VCU. Um, who did they beat? I'm just pulling it up. So they beat USC 59-46 oh. in as an 11 seed in the uh, first four held in Dayton, Ohio, and then VCU uh, got placed into. The uh, Southwest Regional in Texas and ended up, uh, well, actually, technically, I think it was in Denver, the one that they were in. Mm -hmm. So they played, so they beat Georgetown number eight, or number six, sorry, I'm, my vision's off. So they beat Georgetown number six, they beat number three, Purdue, in the, uh, in the second round, and then in the, um, uh, in the, and then the next round, they beat number 10, Florida State. Then they went on to beat number one Kansas, and That's, then yep. they went to the final four, mm -hmm. and I think they lost. Uh, they lost to Butler. That's where I remember. And they, from. so yep. they lost to Butler, oh, yeah, and Butler. who who in turn lost to UConn. Yep. And yeah. UConn won the national championship. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so it was it was VCU, and it was crazy because it was in the very first year that the first four was in existence. Yep. Wow. So the more you know. Yeah. The more you know. Where's my car? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once you get enough points, I'll give you a car. Okay. I'll give you a car. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, thank you guys for joining the Sports Roundtable from the State News. Uh, as always, my name is Brad. Uh, this has been Luke and PJ. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.